Today I'm going to be talking to Linda Norman, a watercolorist in Kelowna, worth your time and attention. So Linda, how do you know when a painting is finished? That's, um, it depends on the painting, obviously, yep. but um, the, the way I've developed my techniques is pretty dependent on the rest of my schedule. Oh, right. Uh, I, I, you yeah, know, I have being a mom and a grandma. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of things, things going yeah. on in my life, and so studio time is sometimes little snippets here and there. Right. So the processes that I've dealt with um, so far have been just quick and, and simple. Um, yeah. I very seldom will go back to a painting, so huh. um, I will, it's usually one and done. And with watercolor, that's that's pretty important right. for the most part because once you start adding more, where there's water things will change and, yeah. and sometimes that's a little bit challenging to, to control. Yeah. Um, especially on a canvas. Oh, no kidding. Because yeah, the flow is there and if I added something else later, that flow would be interrupted. Yeah. So, uh, but on a painting on paper, I could come back to it. Even just for highlights perhaps or so, yes. finishing touches? Yeah, yeah, for highlights I can go back. I've started some on some paintings using a little spatter with some gouache, which right. is an opaque watercolor basically. And I will go back in maybe and, and fine-tune uh, a bit of a shoreline by, by removing right. because until the painting is sealed you can remove the watercolors right. from your surface. Yeah. Uh, most paints will come back or most pigments will come back. Some are staining and, and will be more right. difficult. And again that's that's through experimentation and figuring that out. Yeah. I have a, you know a certain set of colors that I gravitate to yeah. and I know what they will do for me. So. Um, but very often I will, I will get a painting to a point where um, I think I've got all the elements there. I'll stop, I'll take a photo of it, I'll leave the studio, go make a cup of tea, or prepare supper, or, uh, or give, you know... Give some fresh eyes. Give it some time and then yeah. sit down, away from the studio still, look at that photo. Mm, okay, and that nice. will show me, yeah. you know, if, if I need more elements. Does that look out of place? Do I need to add a bit more shadow? Do I uh, need to throw yeah. in some more tree branches? So or occasionally you are, or sort of more often than not? That's pretty much what I do with everyone. Okay, good. And yeah. if I'm happy That's with it story. after I've sat away from it for a bit, yeah. then it's done. Yeah. And I quickly will sign it. I will seal it. I, I seal all my watercolors. Yeah. Um, it's probably not necessary. Daniel Smith paints, as I said, the ones that I use are are light fast. Yeah. They shouldn't fade, but I, you know, especially when I'm uh, selling paintings to pe to yeah. people, I don't want them to have any issues. So yeah. I always put a, a, a UV protectant seal on them. That's and, terrific. Yeah. And then if I bring them to you, then you, if they're on paper, you will put the uh, UV protectant glass. Yeah, I can in a be frame. UV protective, mm -hmm. um, glare reduced. So make, bring out the best of the picture. And, yeah, and that's but, uh, like I said, you you know. You, your mediums and your uh, and your cotton rag and things like that. These are, are pretty solid uh, things um, that aren't as susceptible to you know fading and discoloring like yeah. other mediums, like other papers, like uh, you know. Yes, yeah, some so some uh, some mediums are, are medium, right, yeah. you know that's a big concern. Um, so when I'm when I'm teaching a workshop or advising anybody on watercolor. I always uh, recommend you buy the best you can afford. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yes, and any painter I know that's you know active, active, you know, very busy, they're a stickler for getting the highest quality, and I totally understand that now because I've done you know dabbled with painting in years past. Yeah. I've got a, an abstract downstairs that over oh twenty five years, uh, there's colors that are gone from it because they're cheap acrylics and somehow the yellows in this, in this one piece are just like, where'd they go? Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's yeah. a huge concern and if you're putting the effort into it, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, a, lo a lot of mis mistakes are, are beautiful paintings in the end. Yeah. You know, and, and like so... like you said, stepping back, a photograph of it allows so you, yeah. another part of your brain to, to witness it and to assess it. Right, so you never know when a painting is going to, um, you know, come forward and, yeah. and if you if you used, um, well, and you won't get the results. Mm -hmm. You just won't get the results. Uh, painting on a cellulose-based paper, uh, which is 
most student grade papers that you can buy in craft stores and, yes. and even in the art stores and online, um, if you don't specify 100% cotton, you're going to get a cellulose paper. Right. And it doesn't have the same absorption. That's right. So, so it your results responds very differently to absolutely. your painting. Absolutely. So the, the amount process. of water you use versus pigment changes. Yeah. The, the type of brush you want to use will change uh, because you won't get the same effect. Uh, typically, 100% cotton paper comes in various finishes as well. Oh, yes. Right. So there's hot press and cold press. Hot press, uh, more of a smooth finish. So for like olive oil. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Some's tastier than others, yeah. right? And so the hot press is a smooth finish for people who want to do more detail painting, perhaps, right. you know, an animal or a, or a portrait or, or something that has um, a lot more finer fine lines, fine lines and that kind of thing. Whereas the hot press, which is what I prefer to use because my paintings are, are more loose and open, yeah. um, the hot press, and, and I try to get as rough as possible. So there's there's fine grain and, and rough grain. So there's lots of different. Yeah. You know it becomes texture and depth. And yeah, and I think any kind of painting, as as you progress into it, uh, becomes almost a little scientific in some ways, yeah, right? In a way, yeah. You know, so you're a bit of a chemist. As well. Yeah, without realizing <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. 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 You talk about the uh, um, cotton rag paper. And I, I understand the exquisite uh, nature of that uh, mm -hmm. for artists. And in picture framing, too, it really was the norm. When I started in the 90s, uh, cotton rag was more affordable. Mm -hmm. And it was the standard for the matting process because it's really beautiful. It's got, it just got some very subtle, unique beauty to it yeah. and very protective of artwork. Nowadays, I'm mostly using a cellulose, you know, which is treated to be safe for artwork. Acid-free. Acid-free. <coughs> so it's, um, and it looks good. But, you know, I know that I'm, when I'm working up it up, uh, working with it up close and cutting it, I know, I feel the difference. Yeah. It's an it's a entirely different fiber, of course, yeah. Mm-hmm.